All right, going to do a short, small little study on the sure mercies of David. What are the sure mercies of David? Going to show examples in the scripture of what the sure mercies of David are and how it applies to a New Testament Christian today, because David is a typology of a New Testament Christian. And the sure mercies of David apply to a New Testament Christian because the mercy that God showed David, I believe, is God, he's showing the same mercy to a New Testament Christian because we are, uh, or David is a, type, is a typology of us. So we're going to show some examples of the sure mercies to David and how it applies to a New Testament Christian. So first, turn to Psalm 56, verse 13. Psalm 56, verse 13. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, wilt, thou, uh, wilt, wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Okay, what's going on in this verse right here? Well, basically, uh, it's the sure mercies of David. Okay, the sure mercies of David are being displayed in this verse. The term sure mercies of David are found in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 3 and Acts chapter 13 verse 34. It's displayed in the psalm and others because it's seen as a, it can be seen as a sort of foreshadowing or hinting of eternal security of the believer. Okay, the eternal security of the believer is found in Ephesians 1.13, uh, Ephesians 4.30, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 22, Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39, and 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, and many, many other scriptures. In the New Testament, under the age of grace, okay? Some other examples of this in the book of Psalms are Psalms 94, verses 14 to 16, and Psalm 32, verses 1 to 2. There are some examples of a foreshadowing of the eternal security of the believer. So David is hinting at the eternal security of the believer. That's why I say this verse is about the sure mercies of David. Next, turn to Psalm 66, verses 18 to 20. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me okay what's going on in this verse well this is another example of the sure mercies of david a prophetic reference to eternal security in verse 20 god heard the prayers of david much like a lost sinner who has godly sorrow see second corinthians chapter 7 verses 8 to 11 on that and calls upon the name of the lord see romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 13 for salvation God didn't turn away his mercy from David. The same is the case in the New Testament. New Testament Christians are kept by the power of God. See 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 5. And nothing can separate the saved believer from the love and mercy of God. See Romans chapter 8 verse 35 to 39 and compare it with John chapter 6 verse 35 to 40 and John chapter 10 verse 27 to 29. So this is also about the sure mercies of David and how it applies to a Christian. It's a hinting at eternal security and how God will not cast away a believer. God will not lose them. Uh, next, turn to Psalms 89, verses 15 to 17. Psalms 89, verses 15 to 17. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Interesting about this verse, if you notice, it talks about righteousness. What's this a foreshadowing of? What's this example of the sure mercies of David foreshadowing? Well, this is a prophetic foretelling of the imputed righteousness through Jesus Christ. Compare this verse, verse 16, uh, with Philippians chapter 3, verses 9 to 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 3 to 6, Romans chapter 4, verse 4 to 12, Romans chapter 4, verse 20 to 25, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, and 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 to 31. It's a foretelling. For the, basically for the prophetic foretelling of the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Compare verse 16 of Psalms 89 with those verses I just mentioned. It's a prophetic foretelling of the imputed righteousness. Compare verse 17 with Philippians 4.13, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 10, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 to 18 for a prophetic foretelling of strength through Jesus Christ. So, Again, showing that David is a typology of a New Testament Christian because God is showing him the same mercy and same grace and same, you know, reward system that 
he has for a New Testament Christian. Now here is a good example of how the sure mercies of David apply to a Christian, and a really good example on that. Turn to Acts chapter 13, verses 31 to 37. Acts 13, verses 31 to 37. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who were his wit who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto their fathers, God hath fulfilled, same unto us, their children, that in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And concerning he that he raised up from the dead, how how no more return to corruption he said unto the wise i will give to you i will give you the sure mercies of david wherefore he saith and also in, also in another psalm thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption referring to psalm 16 verse 10. for david uh, after he had served up his own generation but the will of god fell on sleep and was laid unto the to his fathers and saw corruption but he whom god raised up again raised up raised again saw no corruption okay very, very interesting passage right there. Hey, I'm not good at reading on a computer, so I do just bear with me. But a very interesting passage. Why? Because God had the same mercy and grace for David. Okay, he had more mercy and grace for David than he had for others. Why do I say that? Because in 2 Samuel chapter 11, David engaged in sins that normally would have resulted in the death penalty. Okay, adultery. Adultery was given the death penalty. Adultery was uh, was punishable by the death penalty. You can see Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10 and Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 24. And David also committed murder, which also resulted in a death penalty under the Mosaic law. See Numbers chapter 35 verses 16 to 31, Leviticus chapter 24 verse 17, and Leviticus chapter 24 verse 21. And this is confirmed in 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 9. And there was a punishment for David's sins. That resulted in his children suffering. See Second Samuel chapter thirteen, to Second Samuel chapter thirteen to chapter eighteen. I do apologize. I read my notes wrong, but yeah. See Second Samuel chapter thirteen to chapter eighteen. For that, there was a punishment for David. He lost his children. However, God showed mercy to David, and you can read about that in Psalm fifty-one. David is a typology of a New Testament Christian saved by grace. See Psalm thirty-two verses one to two, in comparison with Romans chapter six verse four to Romans chapter four verse six to eight. God is showing the same grace and mercy to Christians that He had for David, because why? All of us have committed sins. All of us are worthy of death, just like David committed sins that were made him worthy of death, adultery, and murder. Christians have also committed sins that are, make us worthy of death. Why? We've sinned against God, and the wages of sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. But God in his mercy, he showed the same mercy to us. Why? Because if you accept Jesus Christ, God will show you mercy. And he won't give you the punishment you rightly deserve, just like he didn't give David the punishment that he rightly deserves. However, he, just like you can see it is this way. God taking away David's children is almost like a typology of God chastening a New Testament Christian who is in sin. Okay, that's how I like to look at it, is that God, he didn't give David the punishment he deserves, just like God is not giving you as a Christian the punishment you deserve, but if you commit sin, he'll chasten you, just as God, instead of punishing David but with death, he took away his children as a form of chastening. So, anyway, I wanted to show you that. That's about the sure mercies of David and how it applies to a New Testament Christians. So, I hope that was a blessing and edifying for you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.